Life, Culture and Current Events from a Biblical Perspective, 2020 on Vision. As you know, you've only got to watch the news headlines to know that there's so much chaos developing in certain parts of the world, you might wonder what momentous and significant things are about to be upon us. Even the rise and fall of nations or the rise and fall of empires. Some reflection today on what makes the rise and fall of an empire. Reflecting back to the Roman Empire, a thousand year history and how the mighty empire fell. You might be interested to understand that the final century of the Roman Empire was a Christianized century. Bill Muhlenberg from Culture Watch has been reflecting on Rome, the fall of Rome. Hello, Bill. Welcome back to 2020. It's great to be back. Bill, the Roman Empire, a thousand years, and the last century of the Roman Empire, we know a lot about that because of some of the wonderful personalities of Christian history, like St. Augustine. What are your thoughts here on how he's reflected on the end of the Roman Empire? Yeah, well, it's uh, relevant uh, to us, certainly. Uh, I think all careful observers looking at the West today are wondering, are we on our last legs? You know, is this the end of the West? I think they're, they've got a pretty good case to be making here. Plenty of Christians have made the same case. So, yeah, in that sense, it's worth looking at history. We should, as Christians, be aware of history. So, yes, I've recently penned a piece looking at the fall of Rome, 410. If you're looking for a specific date is when the Rome was sacked. It took a few more decades before the whole thing finally collapsed in a heap. Uh, but this was pretty amazing stuff at the time, right? Rome was known as the Eternal City. We had a thousand-year empire, basically, and all that came crashing down. That really shocked pretty much everybody. But not just pagans, but Christians as well. As you said, uh, while mainly pagan, uh, during the century before, uh, Christianity had become the official religion of the Roman Empire. Uh, So at this point, there was a more uh, easygoing run with the church. And uh, so when Rome fell to the pagan hordes, uh, people like Jerome and Augustine, and others were asking, "Well, is this the end of uh, end of Christianity? I mean, this we had this kind of cozy relationship; things were going so nicely, and now we got these really pagan, barbaric hordes who are trying to destroy everything. So, is that going to be the end of the faith? Of course, we know it was not. Empires come and go; the faith remains, but." seems to me we can ask questions in the light of today's situation. Are we witnessing the end of the West, and how will that impact the Christian faith? In fact, Bill, at the end of the Roman Empire, at the fall of Rome, the Christian church continued to grow and flourish. I wonder whether you've got any thoughts on that as we get a a context for why an empire might fall. Yeah, well, of course, reasons have been given by secular historians as to, well, a whole three-volume decline and fall of the Roman Empire by Gibbon, for example, comes to mind. But Christians were also asking questions here. It did, as you say, uh, flourish. Uh, The faith kept going. Sure, it was tough. You had a lot of uh, difficulties for a while. In fact, Augustine, who had lived briefly in Italy, was back in North Africa, back at Carthage, when news came to him of the fall of Rome. And, of course, part of his job as a bishop was, well, I've got to give practical help. There's going to be refugees. There's going to be people, including plenty of Christians, fleeing Rome and Italy, coming to North Africa. So how will I minister to them as a Christian? Uh, So, again, unpleasant times when... uh, basically peaceful and uh, civilized society collapses to the pagans. Uh, So that's uh, the downside. But the good side, as you say, the faith continued. Uh, In fact, it's gone on and on from strength to strength. We've seen all kinds of other empires come and go, including Soviet communism has come and gone. Uh, 
uh, the West now may be in its last throes as well. But again, thinking the big picture here, how does the faith relate to cultures and nations? And, uh, you know, how much stock should we put in civilization? I think it's a good thing, right? The West was great for so many things. Freedom, democracy, rule of law, respect for the individual. I mean, these are good social goods that uh, certainly we don't get in uh, communist countries. We don't get in political Islamic nations. So to witness the kind of decline of the West as we are today... Uh, I think that, well, Christians of all people should be concerned. Uh, sure, our faith is not tied to any one civilization, but we've had a pretty good run for a long time, and we should really kind of weep uh, as we see what's happening all around us. Bill, Rome was finally sacked by the Visigoths in 410, and you've been reflecting on the writings of St. Augustine about what Rome was like at the time. How did he describe Rome before it fell? Yeah, well, he spent the next, well, over a decade after the fall of Rome writing about the very thing. Uh, His famous book, The City of God, was exactly a response to what happened. Part of the problem was, of course, people were asking, you know, why did this happen? Who's the fault? And, of course, many were blaming Christians. Oh, because you stopped worshipping all the gods of the empire, that's why this happened. So, in part, the city of God was his defense of Christianity and his idea that there are actually two cities. There's the eternal city of God, of course, that can never end. But there's human cities, human cultures and civilizations that will end. But, yeah, Augustine was quite shocked, as I say, with all the other Christians there had been. Uh, really, this was kind of the height of civilization at the time. With all of its problems, there were a lot of goods uh, coming out of the Roman Empire by this point. You know, civilization is better than anarchy and chaos. So uh, Augustine was quite shocked and upset by the fall of Rome. But again, he had the bigger picture as a Christian that, well, God is uh, still on the throne. He's still in charge. Nations will uh, come and thrive for a while, and then they'll fall. Uh, But God's purpose is God's kingdom will remain. Bill, do you think that we have too much faith today in the idea that our nation will be here standing strong well beyond our own lives or that empires around the world will just continue to be as they are without this idea that there is risk because history shows this, that nations and empires fall? Yeah, exactly. Um You know, sometimes Christians can have too close of a relationship to a particular culture or nation. Uh, We don't or should not put all of our eggs in that basket. Sure, we appreciate good nations, godly government when it's there, and all the blessings that come forth, stability, peace, prosperity, freedom, democracy. These are good things, nothing to be sneezed at. But we can't too closely associate our faith, nonetheless, with any culture, even though I think some cultures are better than others, right? Uh, But it was the same problem with the ancient Israelites. They, too, had this sense, oh, we're we're inviolate, we're permanent. God would never destroy Jerusalem. God would never destroy the temple. So when prophets like Jeremiah came along and said, that's exactly what's going to happen, Uh, Most of the Israelites hated on him. Uh, They loved the false prophets who said, peace, peace, peace. But they hated Jeremiah when he warned, wait a minute, because of your sins, your disobedience, your idolatry, God will act on even his own beloved Jerusalem. So he warned decade after decade. The people hated that message. But, uh, yeah, they had the same kind of thought pattern that so many of us have today. All things will just go on as normal. Nothing will change. We can be cavalier and flippant. Uh, We don't enjoy the freedoms and prosperity that we have, knowing that it's actually a pretty rare thing throughout human history. And at any time, whether a direct act of God's judgment or just the play of nations, 
it can all come crashing to an end. So again, I, I think we have to be students of history, whether it's biblical history or, uh, you know, more recent secular history. We have to learn Otherwise, we end up making the same mistakes. A thousand years of the Roman Empire, the last hundred years, a Christianized Roman Empire. And all of a sudden, here come the Visigoths to overtake Rome, to sack Rome. Bill, a thought here that I remember hearing many, many years ago, the idea that God uses circumstances like this even for the way that the gospel advances and that the Visigoths, in fact, were evangelized when they sacked Rome. Is that something that you're familiar with? Well, yeah, it's always this bigger uh, question of, you know, God is still on the throne. He still is at work. He's still using even evil empires as a means of judgment. He used evil Assyria and Babylon against his own people, Israel. So yeah, God can work good out of it as well. So it's this this balancing act we always need. On the one hand, we don't want to be flippant, cavalier, and just sit back and say, "Eh, whatever it will be, will be. Yes, God's in charge, but he also expects things of us. We should work for godly government. We should good work for a good society. We should be concerned when we see things uh, deteriorating all around us. In my piece on this, I quote from uh, Malcolm Muggeridge. In fact, he's somebody I've written three pieces on this week. He's quite an interesting fellow. But he said before the actual bombs started falling on London during the Second World War, there were first preceded by moral bombardment. In other words, the English uh, world was collapsing fast already, morally, spiritually speaking. It was getting more and more secular, more and more pagan. So for him, you know, obviously concerned, as you should be, about the bombs raining in on London, uh, there had been a moral uh, bombardment taking place before that, and he was greatly concerned about the decline of the West. And again, that's my point. I'm I'm concerned about it. I'm worried about what I see. None of us should be flippant. We should all uh, be grieved in our hearts at what we see. And even if it is divine judgment that God may be allowing, well, Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. He proclaimed the judgment of God, saying this is his historical purposes being enacted, and yet he did so grieving with a tear in his eye. Bill, let's bring this down to where the rubber hits the road today. Perhaps we're talking about Australia. It could be the whole of the Western nations. It could be other nations around the world. Uh, The rise of communist China, the political Mm -hmm. ideology of Islam. These are clearly threats to various nations and even empires around the world. How do we take some lessons out of the fall of Rome and apply them to the present? Yeah, good question. Uh, again, we got to make this relevant. Uh, and again, it's the old balancing act. Uh, on the one hand, God does raise up nations. He does take them down. So in one sense, we could say God has raised up a communist China. He's raised up a North Korea. But as I say, on the other hand, that doesn't mean we become complacent and do nothing. I think things like democracy and freedom are worth defending. They are worth fighting for, right? So the Second World War, uh, whether or not you can talk about, you know, did God raise up a Hitler for whatever reason, we still had every right as Christian and civilized nations to stand against Hitler, to fight against him. So how all this works out in the bigger theological uh, frame uh, things, uh, you know, it's hard for us to get a handle on, but I think we do both. We trust God that he is in control, and yet we also fight for that, which is right. That's why we've, you know, talked over the last 15 years fighting against the war on marriage and family, uh, fighting against the war on the unborn, fighting for religious freedom, right? We have a work to do, we have a job to do. And I also quote Francis Schaeffer in my piece. He said, what is now happening should bother us. Do not take this lightly. To see my own culture going down the gurgler 
in my own lifetime, that grieves me, it bothers me, and it should all Christians. So again, getting this mix, we need the heart of God. On the one hand, yeah, if Australia is judged, if America is judged, well, yeah, we probably deserve it, no question. But on the other hand, it's worth praying for these nations and asking for God's mercy and say, Lord, we had a good run here. We had some good things like freedom, democracy, religious freedom, and so on. I don't think we should be cavalier about seeing it all being thrown away, at least without a fight. So, yeah, that's our uh, calling to kind of see the big picture here and let God do his thing as we do ours. It is sobering to consider the big picture, the big picture of history, the big picture of what's developing around the world today, Bill, and there'll be listeners who'll want to read a little more on what you've been writing about. And the article we've been discussing today, you've had some thoughts in one called On the Fall of Civilizations, and you'll be able to find Bill Muhlenberg and a prolific blogger. Lots of articles you'll find when you go to billmuhlenberg.com or simply Google Culture Watch One Word. Bill, thanks so much for a great insight today on 2020. Thanks again, Neil. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.